Hey guys, Yanis here. Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to the first episode of the FAQ series. I got many, many interesting questions from uh, all of you and I want to say a big thank you for your support and for wanting uh, to be part of this. So before we begin, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, like my Facebook page and follow me on Instagram. So let's begin. Did your classical guitar training play a significant role in your electric technique, phrasing, compositional skills? That's an interesting question and I get asked quite a lot about it. Uh, regarding technique, definitely um, classical guitar and classical training helped me a lot with uh, the left hand. I mean, how the notes should ring and be full and the placement of the left hand, all these things are things that I learned uh, by practicing classical guitar exercises from uh, Segovia or Pujol. Uh, they helped me very, very, very much. On a second level, I gotta say that uh, classical um, guitar and classical training helped me very much to learn how to put my emotions uh, on the instrument. So it's one thing to play the notes that you have in front of you it, in a totally different story to be able to play them like music uh, in a way that you are moved and people that hear you are moved. So composition wise, uh, definitely the most beneficial thing was uh, harmony, theory and counterpoint because you learn how chords should be connected, how the voices should move. Um, and, or at least you learn how these things were done in the classical era, uh, where the, let's say, the rules were tough. You need to write in a certain stylistic way. And obviously, if you take these limitations out and you just use the knowledge that you have gained, it's easy to understand how different people compose. It's easy for you to compose and have, um, a more global perception about music in general. When will your second book be released? It's mentioned in your electric guitar technique workout that you are working on a book regarding the mind. Any news on it? I'm looking forward to it. Let me start by saying a big thank you for purchasing my book and supporting my work. I'm working on the second book as we speak actually. It's gonna have theory, harmony, scales, chords, arpeggios, uh, exercises and suggested methods that you can work on the material so that you can master it faster. Uh, the plan is that it's gonna be out around September or so, so I'm gonna have more news around summer. So just stay tuned. I gotta say that I like how it looks and how it's turning out. So more news soon. How you maintain your technique in and out of road? Do you have any tip for a guitar player who has a full-time job and a family and needs to evolve in the instrument? Dude, actually that's a question that I have in my mind uh, the past months. Uh, so I recently became a father myself, so I'm also in the process of figuring out how to put, let's say, things in action so that I'm not behind with my playing and I put as much time as I can uh, in my family and my friends. The key thing that I think works, or at least this is how I think about it, uh, is you need to be persistent, you need to be determined, and you need to be sure that you won't sleep as much as you want to. <laughs> These are the things that uh, I have understood so far. So, generally speaking, I'm trying to organize what I need to work um, and how I'm gonna do it inside my week. So I know more or less which are my off days or which are the days that I have much work or not. So usually the days that uh, I have many lessons or have many things to do, I do my revisions. So I revise my chords or I revise uh, arpeggios or scales. For example, if I have three days per week or four days per week, which are so busy, I try to do different revisions each day. So for example, one day I may revise uh, all my major modes and then the next day the harmonic minor modes, the other day melodic minor modes, then symmetric scales. So I do rotation so nothing is left behind uh, 
in a week. Uh, now regarding technique, the days that I have a bit more time, I'm trying to do technique. Uh, the way I divide it, usually it's uh, every day that I'm practicing technique, I do alternate picking. That's the technique that I feel it needs more time, definitely, at least for me. And then depending the time, I might do, for example, alternate picking and uh, legato or alternate picking and sweep picking or alternate picking in economy. Then if I have time, uh, I practice improvisation. So usually this is how I divide it. Uh, so it's going to be like uh, technique and improvisation and the days that are more busy, I usually do the, um, the revisions that I told you. So this is what happens when I'm at home, but when I'm on the road, I believe it's a bit more easy because you have plenty of time um, during the day Obviously, in the days off, you have plenty of time to work on your technique. I mean, usually when I'm on the road, I spend at least two or three hours per day practicing on the days that I have a gig and on the days off, maybe even more depending the day and the mood. But generally speaking, um, during uh, the tour time, I do my heavy practice. I have seen you win online guitar competitions. My question is one, how do you get to know and get updated about these kind of competitions? And two, what are your strategies to go about writing those awesome solos for the contests? So the key thing you can do if you wanna learn about these competitions is use Google. So just type guitar competitions and usually you will find a bunch of them running um, at any point. But uh, usually the ones that you can find on uh, Google have to do with classical guitar. Sometimes they also write about the electric guitar competitions, but you can definitely find about the classical ones. So if you wanna check about electric guitar competitions, I would say you should uh, follow various guitar players, uh, follow their social media channels, because usually um, guitar players are the ones that are being the judges, so they are uh, promoting the competitions in their social media. And also the same thing happens with, uh, let's say, manufacturers, uh, amps, uh, pedals, strings, all that stuff. Usually companies uh, give their products uh, as part of a prize in competitions. So again, they promote their, these competitions on their social media channels. So regarding any kind of strategy that I use uh, for the solos I compose, for the competitions. I can't say that I have any certain strategy in mind. Um, I'm just trying to place something that I like and I feel like it's good. So the first advice I think I can give you is trust yourself, trust your ears, trust your instinct. Obviously, sometimes you're gonna fall out and you will be like, man, I've written the best solo ever. And people will hear it and be like, dude, are you kidding me? But this is part of the game. Uh, it's a process, it's a trial and error process, and you're gonna have to write a few solos so that you will find what's the sweet spot between what you think and what other people think. And after you understand how it works, then I think that you're gonna have uh, the recipe that you're looking for. and. Uh, yeah, that will give you a good starting point for all these competitions. I really appreciate your playing and hope I'll be as dexterous as you one day. My question is that how can I get confident with my playing? For instance, when I'm not recording my stuff, I play without hitching and with full control. But as soon as I start recording the same stuff, I get nervous and I have to give numerous takes to record it perfectly. I feel I have a mental blockage while recording. A little piece of advice will help. Regards from India. I believe everybody struggles more or less with this kind of thing. Um, it's just that the more time you put on the instrument and the more effort you put working on your technique, um, the more, let's say, prepared you are when you're about to record something. Um, Apart from that, I believe it's also something that has to do with experience. So if you are in the process of recording, for example, every day, if you're working in the studio, uh, it's much easier 
uh, to be more prepared and write something without so many mistakes or without any mistakes than somebody that, I don't know, records every once per month or once per year. What I would tell you is, first of all, be prepared. Before you go and record something, be prepared. Have your lines, your riffs ready. Um, this means that you need to be very precise and have a very clear image in your head about what you're gonna play. And if possible, practice it with a metronome. So when you're in the studio, you won't have any issues uh, with time or with phrasing and stuff. Um, on the other hand, if you if you're going to improvise in the studio and you're talking about problems with improvisation, I would say you need to uh, raise your game regarding your improvising skills. So work more on your uh, technique, work more on your skills, on your arpeggios, and obviously improvise as much as you can every day if possible. So in any case, it's a matter of experience, it's a matter of uh, how you work about it, about uh, overcoming your problem, but definitely you're not alone, my friend. Everybody has problems, everybody has more or less these kinds of issues. So just be patient and keep working on it. It's gonna get better. So that was today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page and follow me on Instagram, and also check my website, www.yannispapadopoulos.gr. Um, use the comment section to ask your questions and you never know, maybe your question will be featured on the next episode. See you soon guys, rock on!